Hello people, in this video let us look at primary open angle glaucoma. It is open angle glaucoma, remember. The angle is open here. It is glaucoma, but the angle is open here. Right? And it is primary. That is, there is no other secondary cause uh, which is systemic or other ocular causes. So, it is primary cause. Okay? Primary, something happened and there is glaucoma. It is also called as POAG. POAG. It is also called as chronic, simple glaucoma of adults onset okay so in glaucoma first of all what is glaucoma it is a, a group of disorders what and all will be there this optic neuropathy right the optic nerve will be affected and uh, there will be visual field defects that this guy sees irreversible these are irreversible visual field defects right and this is usually associated with raised intraocular pressure that is around uh, greater than 22 millimeter of mercury normal is around 16 average you can say okay so what is glaucoma you have understood basically intraocular pressure will rise right because of which when this pressure rises it will put pressure on all these right and there will be optic nerve damage optic neuropathy and because of which the person's visual field will have defect <clears throat> okay so uh, this is about uh, glaucoma so what we saw here are three things optic neuropathy visual field defects raised intraocular pressure out of these three at least two should be there okay so you just remember two out of two out of these three should be there right now let us say that you have optic neuropathy and ir irreversible uh, visual field defects. Then uh, what will happen? There is no raised intraocular pressure. Then what will you call it as? You will call as normal tension glaucoma. Okay, what is, what is it called as? Normal or low tension glaucoma. NTG, LTG they are calling it as. Now let us take another example. Okay, um, there is uh, raised intraocular pressure, right? But there are no other changes. So, it is not at all glaucoma, right? 2 out of 3 is not satisfied. So, if there is only raised intraocular pressure, but there is no damage as such, that is called as ocular hypertension. So, it is kind of a good thing. There is no damage, okay, yet probably. Now, let us see why we are reading this glaucoma. Glaucoma we are reading because it is a second most cause of blindness. You can see here major cause of blindness is in the world. You have cataract is first and second is glaucoma. Trachoma you have studied, right? Preventable blindness and all that. That is coming after glaucoma. So, you can imagine cataract and glaucoma will be very high uh, yield topics for you. A classification of glaucoma, you have understood what glaucoma is. Um, so, basically before this video, you have understood why glaucoma, uh, why the pressure increases, right? Why the uh, pressure increases? So basically, aqueous humor is produced where? In the posterior chamber by the ciliary processes, it is produced and then it comes out of the pupil and then it tries to drain. Mainly, it will try to drain by the trabecular meshwork or through the ciliary body itself, it will try to drain. Mainly through the trabecular meshwork. Now, for some reason, either it is producing more of uh, aqueous or the drainage is less. So that is why you will have raised intraocular pressure. Why? Because either the production has increased or the drain has decreased. So, usually you can remember this, the drainage would have reduced the trabecular meshwork, whatever they are telling, the trabecular meshwork could have got clogged. Okay. So, the drainage will not happen. So, the pressure will raise here. Here you have to write a lot of numericals. In introduction, you just give a lot of introduction about the aqueous humor and all that. And then you say that it is rate of production, how much Right, it will be around some 2.3 microliter per minute, right? This is the rate, isn't it? So, we have just zoomed here. So, the aqueous humor gets produced where? In the posterior chamber from the cilia process, it comes out of the pupil and it drains where? Into the trabecular meshwork and the mainly trabecular meshwork, you can remember. So, this is the path. So, we will assume you know all this. Now, we will actually, what and all we want to look at in this video, in primary open angle glaucoma, POAG, we want to look at what it is, uh, predisposing risk factors, pathogenesis, so many things we want to look at. Anyways, let's look at it. So, we have understood difference in terminologies. So, we have, uh, now let us look at classification of glaucoma. In that, what are we looking at? We are looking at primary open angle glaucoma. So, basically, this is adult. It is affecting whom? The adult. We are looking at primary open angle glaucoma. It comes under primary adult glaucomas okay so you have congenital developmental glaucomas you have primary adult glaucomas right all these are going to be primary glaucomas okay secondary glaucomas we have put here in yellow so basically secondary glaucoma some other cause right uh, systemic cause or some other ocular cause like um, 
Uh, remember uveitis, this anterior uveitis you have seen. Then lens into induced, you have phacogenic because of lens, right? Phacogenic. Then you have uh, something called as pigmentary glaucoma, neovascular glaucoma, traumatic glaucoma, steroids. If you give, they can increase uh, glaucoma. So basically, here what are we looking at? We are looking at primary open angle glaucoma. This is very common, so you need to know it. So what it is, everything you understood. So let's get started then. With the epidemiology, let's start. Okay, see, in the world, about 40 years, whoever are there, in them, 2% people, they will have glaucoma. Okay, in that 1% people will have actually POAG, that is primary open angle glaucoma. Remember here, the angle is open. Which angle is open? Iridocorneal angle is open. So, do you know that iridocorneal, this angle will be open. That's why, that's why we are calling it as primary open angle glaucoma. Right? What is the problem then? The problem here is the trabecular meshwork meshwork will be clogged sometimes we don't know the cause also sometimes it can happen like that now whom and all does it affect mainly african uh, you can remember okay european african hispanic uh, they have a lot of chances okay so let us look at this uh, above the age of 40 either male or female they can be if they are above the age of 40 they can be affected with this okay and it is a slowly progressive over time it happens and they would have lost a lot of vision but they wouldn't even know that they have lost the vision there is no obvious cause so there is no obvious cause systemic or ocular cause there is no obvious cause that is why it is called as primary okay so how will you know that the angle is open the uh, angle the normal appearing anterior chamber angle will be there this is the main thing right that's why it is open angle glaucoma and there will be visual field defects, yes. Optic neuropathy leading to visual field defects. Look at this. This is gonioscopy. They'll find out whether the angle is open or not. Now we are going to this one. Predisposing and risk factors. Who and all have risk of developing this? So just see if you have all this, then you may have risk of developing glaucoma. Do you have increased intraocular pressure? Go get it checked. Family history. Anybody in your family has these genes? Myosilin, optineurin gene. Do they have? Then what about age? Is your age, uh, with increasing age, they will uh, get this 50, 70. 50 years, 70 years. Okay, 50, 60, 70 years. Race, we already told you, more in black. Myopic people have more risk to developing glaucoma than normal people. I have myopia. So will I get glaucoma after 50, 60, 70 years? Okay, I have to get my intraocular pressure checked, isn't it? Let us look at the other risk factors here. Thin corneal thickness. This they are talking about central corneal thickness. Thin central corneal thickness if you have, it may be a risk factor for developing what? Primary open angle glaucoma. So in the thin um, central part, if the cornea is really thin, then they can get, get glaucoma. Okay. Diabetics, yes. Uh, then cigarette smoking, high blood pressure. That means it's more in hypertensives than... See, most of this will somehow feel uh, secondary also, secondary glaucoma. It feels like that to me. But anyways, thyrotoxicosis, graves, if people have graves, ophthalmic disease, corticosteroids, yes, we already told you, they are likely to um, develop raised intraocular pressure, remember. Steroids can do so many harms. One is it can... Uh, make you prone to infection then it can make your uh, intraocular pressure more and make you get glaucoma so we are done with uh, what we are done with the uh, predisposing and risk factors excellent so what did you see here in predisposing and risk factors uh, risk factors you saw age some myopics then family some uh, some genes there then uh, race central corneal thickness diabetes smoking all that you will write hypertension diabetes write that everywhere cigarette smoking write that graves corticosteroids okay now let's move on to what pathogenesis why will their intraocular pressure rise so where are we people people here we are pathogenesis of rise of iop so basically here they are blaming only the outflow okay decreased outflow they are blaming they are saying some pump mechanism has failed trabecular meshwork has become stiff the schlem's canal has become uh, <clears throat> some opposition of by opposition of Schlem's canal wall. <clears throat> so, see, let us say here, this is Schlem's canal, right? Canal of Schlem. Here you have the trabecular meshwork. 
so the uh, aqueous is trying to go in because they are saying opposition of schlem's canal wall trabecular meshwork stiffening thickness thickening and sclerosis of trabecular meshwork narrowing of the intra trabecular spaces all the spaces in this <clears throat> trabecular meshwork they have got narrowed right then what are they saying <clears throat> then collapse of schlem canal schlem canal itself collapsed some amorphous material came and uh, everything got clogged here so it got it clogged this uh, trabecular meshwork right exact why all this happens they don't know that is why primary that is why it is called primary open angle glaucoma they don't know why all this is happening okay so if they ask here main thing you will write is uh, what will you write pathogenesis outflow is blocked so elaborate on that okay now let us move on next is what pathogenesis of optic neuro so basically you know the intraocular pressure is more so what will happen Me mechanical pressure you know that right mechanical pressure could be one reason for optic neuropathy then vascular insufficiency because of vasospasm or uh, some other blood supply is not proper so again the nerve starts dying secondary insults basically the death of one ganglion retinal ganglion cell will trigger uh, it will release so many toxins like glutamate oxygen free radicals night trick oxide all these and that will result to secondary insult and other surrounding ganglion cells and uh, those cells will start dest getting destroyed so did you understand the theories now let us see what happens basically these retinal ganglion cells are not going to receive growth factors like neurotropins because of all this pressure and the uh, vascular uh, uh, insufficiency right and because of all these secondary insults they are not going to get these neurotropins so they will undergo apoptosis so retinal ganglion cells are dying guys and then um, uh, because of these dying there's a cascade everybody else also starts dying loss of retinal nerve fibers so we are done with pathogenesis of optic neuropathy also so now let us move on to clinical features symptoms so what will happen to the patient who is developing all this so if they can be asymptomatic you know until they get some major visual field uh, defect then they will be asymptomatic they can have headache eye ache mild density so that we have put here then they can have scotoma that means uh, occasionally they will uh, they can notice if they are very careful and observant they can notice otherwise they will not know that they have it also so that will be a negative scotoma they won't know that they have it like uh, they won't know that they are not able to see some portions of the uh, visual field and then um, uh, difficulty in reading and close work very difficult to read something which is near why because there is accommodative failure because of this pressure inside their eye and um, the clinical feature the symptom what you have to know here is they will come with frequent changes in presbyopia glasses because after 40 people will develop presbyopia isn't it so every 6 uh, months or something they will start changing their presbyopia glasses uh, glasses because of accommodative failure so that time you should know that this person could have high intraocular pressure then delayed dark adaptation they can have so this photo was for uh, reading reading glasses they'll keep changing dark adaptation they may have uh, tub, trouble okay and then significant loss of vision finally they have some tunnel vision kind of thing only in the center they can see kind of a thing okay so all these are the symptoms did you see in symptoms asymptomatic till they have major field loss uh, then uh, headache eye ache then the reading uh, near things is problem frequent change in presbyopic glasses dark adaptation time has increased and lastly we saw some uh, tunnel vision kind of a thing right so we are done with symptoms now let's move to signs okay signs is going to be really big <clears throat> anyways see severity of glaucoma damage something they have mentioned here mild means normal field vision they will have moderate means some uh, abnormality severe means so much of field vision problem okay now let us go to signs as a doctor what will you observe anterior chamber what will you see gonioscopy you did obviously you saw normal angle but in late stages you will see that the pupil reflex is sluggish and uh, central corneal thickness uh, if it is low it's a risk factor this we already told you so anterior chamber basically will check angles will be open open angle then coming to intraocular pressure whenever you check right intraocular pressure these will be varying so there is a diurnal variation test you will check how his intraocular pressure varies during the day so this first one in green is actually the normal so normal in morning you will see some slight rises there 20 right um this one 20 is uh, normal only right 
you know that right 20 what is uh, glaucoma uh, intraocular pressure is they said about 20 22 right so this is fine only though it is more in the morning now let us look at the uh, next one b b in b what you are seeing it is really high 40 right 40 in the morning now come to c c in the afternoon his pressure is really high 40 okay then coming to last diagram here biphasic the biphasic variation you are seeing so basically if there is a variation over 8 mm is diagnostic of glaucoma if it is 5 mm around it is suspicious but above that it is diagnostic about 8 okay so look at this um, repeated observations of iop every 3 to 4 hours for 24 hours is required during the stage this is diurnal variation test see this guy for example 40 here and 20 here so his difference is what 20 so this guy is definitely glaucoma <clears throat> this guy is definitely glaucoma this guy is definitely glaucoma and if i am not wrong this guy is also glaucoma and the green also because the variation is around 10 i am seeing definitely more than 8 what do you see so this guy is also glaucoma 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 so intraocular pressure in science we are done with intraocular pressure right next what will you check for the patient you will check his optic disc So optic disc regularly you have to keep examining whether it's progressing because it's a slow progressive disease. They have given so many things here how to do examination, fundus examination, some slit lamp by microscopic examination, non-contact lenses. Then they have some Heidelberg retinal tomograph, confocal scanning, laser tomograph. So many methods they have actually explained here. Okay, scanning, laser, polarimetry, nerve fiber analyzer. so many things basically after doing all this compare with this healthy uh, optic disc shown here and they will tell you whether you are in early glaucomatous change or advanced changes or finally if you have reached optic atrophy that will they will tell you so let us look at early glaucomatous changes guys this optic disc changes we will look at in the next video okay fundus examination you will do and you will see the early advanced and optic atrophic disc changes glaucomatous see you in the next video bye bye